The world is a dangerous place. And now America has become a dangerous place. I'm not here to scare you, but I do want to help prepare you. About 35 miles down the road today, in the early morning hours, one, two o'clock in the morning, there's a prominent pastor over in Mount Julia, Tennessee, not far from where I live. And a man came, I'm not even gonna call him a madman. That's what he called him, but I'm gonna call him evil. And he opened fire on Greg Locke's home. He only had one child at home, thankfully in the other wing of the house. His truck was shot up. His uh, home was shot up, uh, unloaded an entire magazine on his home. And listen, this is not about gun control. What happened was evil. You think about ha what happened to uh, the good Bishop Marmati over in Australia, where they had all the gun grabs, remember that? So hardly anybody can, can carry a firearm anymore. What happened? Young man attacked him in the name of Allah and took his eye out. You know, so that could happen here in the United States of America. And you not only need to be prepared in the natural, you need to be prepared more importantly uh, in the spiritual. A lot of people would say mental, but I'm not gonna say that because a lot of people talk about mental illness, but at the core of mental healing is spiritual healing. What does God's word say? That you have power, love, and a sound mind. You have self-control, right? That's the word of God. And we gotta know and remind ourselves as believers that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, right? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, you know, but principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what we come against as the church, as the ecclesia, is all of that in the name of Jesus. We cannot be afraid. Are we gonna feel fear? Yes. But what do you do when you feel fear? It's either fight or flight, right? So we'll just use that analogy right there, fight or flight. When I am afraid, I will trust in thee is what the Bible says. So when you feel fear, you run to the Lord. You get your strength. You don't shut down. And then what do you do? You fight. You fight in the spirit. You war in the spirit with the word of God. You pray in the, in the Holy Ghost. Your prayers avail much. A lot of people say, well, you know, it's just time to armor up in the natural. No, you got plenty. Listen, a lot of us have plenty of, of ammo. We got plenty of firearms. You know, plenty of, uh, if you don't have that, you've got other, other kind of protection. Um, strategies around your home in case the, you know, the grid goes down or something like that. A lot of people are saying, not a lot, but some people are saying, well, that's just conspiracy. There you go again. We, we wouldn't have expected any of this, right? We wouldn't have expected our borders to be open and, and porous and, and terror cells forming. You know, we wouldn't expect a, a, a presidential candidate to get shot at. You know, and a fair amount of people when you do the man on the street interviews, they're saying, oh, I wish you'd gotten taken out. You know, hate is a horrible thing. The only thing can, that can overtake hate is the love of God, not just human kindness. Sorry, Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> love you, man, love your movies. You know, you're going toe to toe with, uh, you know, T.D. Jakes and, you know, up there on your platform saying that, you know, it's just your humanity, it's your human spirit. Your human spirit will only take you so far. And I think as believers, a lot of us lean way too much on our humanity and not enough on Jesus. I'm gonna say that again. A lot of us as believers lean way too much on our humanity in the soulless realm and not on the Holy Ghost. That's the whole reason that we have the Holy Ghost, right? Is to walk in power, you know, uh, to, to pray protection. You know, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And the weapons that were formed against Pastor Locke, no matter what you think about him, I shouldn't even have to preface that. But now you have to say, well, no matter what you believe about somebody, you shouldn't have gotten shot. No, he's standing for righteousness. You know, let's let's do what uh, Jack Hayford says and let's come together on the 98% of the word of God that we agree on. And agree to get disagree on the, the 2%, you know, the tongues, the healing, whatever you're, you're tw tweaking about, you know, or um, 
you know, getting angry about and calling people out to be heretics. We need to come together as a body of Christ. And we need to come together across denominational lines. I'm not here to be the guy, the go-to guy to, you know, unite Baptists and Pentecostals. You know, I have uh, some some attachments to, to both those denominations, but ultimately it, it, it's the Holy Ghost. You know, ultimately we're brothers and sisters in Christ and we need to stand up. We don't need to be approaching each other and saying, well, you're, you're just wrong. And you know, I'm a Christian, but you know, you just need to stop saying this or, or taking this angle. Stop it. We need to come together. If 3% of us, I don't know where this comes from, but <laughs> I've been told by some of my evangelist friends that typically when 3% of the body of Christ comes together during an election season, that's when things go good. That's when things go right. 3%, you know, I think it's down to, I think 65, 67% of, of people identify themselves as, as Christian. You know, not all of them are born again. You know, and you must be born again to be a Christian, become a, a child of God. But if we all came together as a remnant, there's power in that. God's always operated from the remnant. He's always operated by a small amount of people. You think about Gideon, right? Thousands, you know, he had ready to go uh, to, to attack. And God said, no, all you need is, is 300. Those 300 that will not bury their head in the, in the stream, that will be on the lookout, will be watchmen on the wall. I wanna encourage you today. This is an upsetting and a disturbing thing and it should be for all of us. Don't bury yourself and hide yourself as a believer. Get in church, get out in the open, live your faith out in public. Don't let something like this shut you down. You know, certainly pray for the Locke family. His family has been terrorized. Okay, now I know he's gonna get up and stand up and, and gonna be on fire and press in all the more. Obviously he's gotta up his security. He already had pretty good security, you know, but now he needs it all the more in his home. You know, how are ministers, this is where, where I get angry and being a preacher's son and walking among apostles and evangelists and prophets and teachers. You know, now you have to have corporate security even when you don't have a big budget at your church. You know, you gotta, you gotta have ITs. One of my friends says, I've gotta have an IT staff. You know, they're taking me down, not just off social media, uh, but they're trying to take down my websites. You know, and um, <clears throat> this is somebody that some, some of you might not even know about, but he's just, the, God is just rising him up, but he's rising you up as, as well. And you need to be prepared for a whole lot of rejection. And you need to be prepared for a whole lot. And listen, I'm not talking about the 1% of people that automatically just hate you because that's scientifically proven. You know, if you're <laughs> wanting everybody to like you or the majority of people to like you, and good luck with that. It's not, not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Ultimately, you have to stand. And I'm gonna leave you with this. You know, I've been reading uh, the gospels and my Bible readings. And once Jesus was baptized, once he uh, was tested out in the wilderness and he began to uh, preach the word, some of the first words that came out of his mouth as he began his ministry were repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So if you're an unbeliever, that means turn, making a 180, turning from your way, turning from your sin and coming to Jesus. Okay. And that means saying, you know, Jesus, come into my heart, call the shots in my life. I turn from my sin. Uh, thank you for, for paying the, the, the price for my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord and be my savior. Help me. Holy ghost. That's the born again life right there that you need. That's how you can best be prepared as, as an unbeliever, as a believer, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Same message. Repent just your little pet sins it's time to die to them it's time to be done with it it's time to be done with it and, and move on there's so much that god is doing in the earth right now and you were designed to be a part of it from before the foundation of the earth rise up you know if you've been just to hold up at home listen there's people it's it's crazy and you know, i moved to middle tennessee and i thought 
you know, my community, they're just like every other house would have, you know, a sign for a particular conservative candidate. Let's just put it that way. Or, you know, that people just have, you know, uh, all, all Christian decorations up, you know, or predominantly Christian decorations up during the Christmas time. No, it's just all about Santa. <laughs> you know, right now, people in this community, what do they get excited about? Halloween, man, let's get all the skeletons out. I'm not, I'm not condemning anyone for that. I'm just saying, what does that do? It opens a door, you know? Well, it's just about the kids and the candy. And it's like, my goodness, why do you think they're pushing it at Lowe's? Why do you think they're pushing it at Home Depot? Because that's what sells. People are attracted to, to, to darkness predominantly. Again, not condemning you uh, for whatever you believe about that. Me, no. I want to put up Christmas decorations like now. I want to put a big nativity scene out in my front yard now because all year long is all about Jesus. I want to encourage you to share this uh, video. I want to encourage you to comment on it, like on it. Hey, you don't have to agree with me. That's fine. You know, comment if you don't like it. Put a fire emoji down there if you're you're all for standing up for Jesus and for righteousness. But let this uh, this video challenge you. Let this message challenge you to be prepared. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's a dangerous place in this world. Now it's getting dangerous uh, in America. And we need to be prepared, not just in the natural, uh, but in the spirit realm as well. We have total access to that at all times as a believer. We come boldly before the throne of grace. Uh, to receive comfort and help in time of need. Pray for your pastors, pray for your ministries. Don't be afraid to go to church, okay? Because the devil would love to do, you know, he doesn't have anything to new, new to traffic in. So he'd love for you to just stay home from church and, and say, well, I just need to hunker down for a while. I'm afraid of what's going on in the world. If he can get you now, he's gonna keep digging in and um, trying to shut you down. You know, ultimately the devil is trying to kill you. First of all, he tries to silence you and muzzle you. Then he tries to all out kill you. Now, the weapons formed against you will not prosper, but you know what? At the same time, look at the first century apostles. Most of them, almost all of them, were, were executed for the faith. But look at what the gospel has done uh, in the earth. So be encouraged. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. And Jesus is Lord.